Hi, I'm Number Two. I've been a Brazilian tabletop RPG content creator since 2017. And in my channel, we have many actual play tables, we have discussion programs, interviews with local creators, blogs, and all sorts of variations of what I just told you. I don't usually present myself or record anything in English because my intent has always been to cater to a Portuguese speaking audience. But what I'm going to talk about in this video involves one specific gringo, so you're welcome. And yesterday, I woke up to this. And for the sake of argumentation, I'll describe what I'm seeing and we can talk about it. The video and posts were made in a way to call attention to a player, performing over the narration she is listening to. The reaction that her character had at the time, at the moment in time that she was playing the game. It points out her next level role play and how the game, Call of Cthulhu, can facilitate that, using her performance as a selling point for the game. It doesn't outright say that if you buy Call of Cthulhu, you will also get there, but it, it is implied in the context. So, some of you are probably already telling me this. This is a classical marketing tactic. But is it really? Let's talk a little bit about this. So, role-playing and acting. Let's try to understand two things that might be the same here. We have the definition of roleplay right here. So when I'm teaching an English class, our students are sometimes put in roles that don't actually represent them directly. They are Emily, calling the university's office to get additional information on their tuition fees. When they turn to me as the clerk, answering the phone and ask for information, they are playing a role but definitely different than in the context of what we saw in the, in the video previously. Historically, in gaming, role-playing has been about performing a role within a group, the so-called adventuring party. You are a wizard, so you cast spells and deal with magic. You are a ranger, so you use a mix of different weapons and understand the wilderness very well. Uh, you weren't expected to talk within the character, nor have any sort of emotional arc. Narratively speaking, you were performing actions as the role you were assigned, and then that was that. Nowadays, you can certainly find games that try to evoke that sort of playstyle, but it is undeniable that the mainstream of gaming has made a move to providing very well-crafted worlds with plenty of explorable hooks and motifs, writing that takes mood and themes from genres of other mediums that uh, tries to emulate them mechanically and narratively. With this being brought to the table now, we have a different set of expectations as players, and since gaming has turned to live streaming and uh, recording sessions, as expectators too. An easy example to find uh, of that is the backstory area of Call of Cthulhu character sheet. If you get the 5th edition Call of Cthulhu from 1990, you'll see that that part of the, the character sheet is like this size, it just says history, and then you're supposed to write stuff there. And the game doesn't help you at all with anything there. Now, if we go to 7th edition Call of Cthulhu, you'll find uh, many different areas within that and many different tables and you actually see that the book uh, helps you in, in writing those narrative prompts. And you see, they are narrative prompts because they are used in the context of the game narratively, not necessarily to provide any mechanical difference. So, we have roleplay, and then we have acting. And to talk about acting, I asked someone I know with a doctor's degree 
in theater here in Brazil to help me out. And she's a terrific person and very much involved in the Brazilian tabletop RPG community. Uh, so check her work out uh, in the description below. This is Dr. Joanna for you. One thing is the differentiation of role-playing with your friends in a casual environment, and another is what a professional is doing in a professional set with other actors and the production that it entails. Is role-playing essentially different from acting? No, I don't believe it is, they're both performances. But the case of the video is clearly made in a way to enhance and elicit those performances from the participants, paid actors, and in many ways those performances are expected by the viewers and that's why they watch these shows. While in a casual home game environment you could have beautiful performances happen, but in many ways that is not the intention or the expectation. To be completely honest, I didn't expect that response. I thought at the time that there would be a clear difference between role-playing and acting. Uh, but my feelings towards the post made by Chaosium remains unchanged. I still believe it is problematic to, add, to attribute next-level role-playing to what essentially is a professional uh, working in a professional capacity and use it uh, to use its impact, the performance's impact, as a selling point to your game. So why am I still bothered by that? Let's dive into this. Performance and performance. Whenever we talk about acting and role-playing, within the context of this very cyclical discussion, I tend to see the conflation of two different definitions that use the same performance. <clears throat> we have artistic performance or artistic expression and performance as in how well you do something. I see this particularly in comparisons to sports. Uh, hey Leo, so you're saying that it is detrimental to basketball to use Michael Jordan's performance to sell something? No. What I'm saying is Michael Jordan's performance is measured. There are industry standards to qualify how exceptional of a player he was because we are analyzing how well he plays basketball using subjective and objective indicators. Now, can you do the same with the roles played at an RPG table? Well, According to Richard Chechner, I hope I didn't butcher his last name, sorry, mister. Anything can be seen and analyzed as a performance, but not everything is a performance. He calls those as performances and is performance. And when he outlines the definition of is performance, he says this. His performance is what any particular culture, at any particular moment of its existence, deems to call a performance. Okay, so have we as a subculture got into a consensus to define what constitutes next level roleplay? We have not. Marketing and tabletop RPGs. I had my first tabletop RPG experience at the very critical moment of my life. I had been living in the countryside of the south of Brazil for all my life at the time and our family decided for many reasons to move to the capital of our state. I have always been a weird kind of kid, but I have not had the issue of making friends up until that point at all. But my last few years in primary school were very alienating. They were alienating because the city we were living at at the time, they didn't have the last two years. They Sorry, they didn't have the last year of a course for students to take. So for the last two years of my primary school experience, I lived 
in one town, my school was in another town, and my family was in a third different town. The result was I lived in between places all the time. And that made me go inwards. In Porto Alegre, I, I had a really hard time making new friends and uh, tabletop RPGs were my socialization tool. It was the way I found to make new friends, to express myself. And it is in more ways that I can express the gift that keeps on giving. To me. I soon find myself, found myself surrounded by weird people, and I loved it and continue to love it. In my time, we didn't have references beyond our friends of what was considered next level, and there wasn't nearly enough pressure to perform in a specific way or another as there is today. And that is because we live in a different world at the time. Now, if you're a woman, you already know where I'm going with this talk. But for everybody else, follow me. Now, tabletop RPGs, they have a face now. And it is mostly white, perfectly pearly teeth, camera and media trained. They get together on their sets that cost between five or six digits, and after one hour of makeup and wardrobe, they sit down to play the same game as I play. With their friends, they are mostly white, perfectly pearly teal, camera and media trained. So in the past, I, I called this the Los Angelesification of tabletop RPGs. And I get it. Marketing-wise, sure, it makes a lot of sense to use pretty and acting trained people to sell more. But coming back to Michael Jackson, no, coming back to Michael Jordan here, his shoes didn't improve his ability to play the game. But it was implied in the context of the marketing used. It didn't matter if the guy bled because he was using those shoes. People bought it because they wanted to be Michael Jordan. And some didn't bother trying to play because they didn't look like Michael Jordan. Or they didn't have the money to buy his shoes. Michael Jordan was the reference. What I'm trying to point out here is actually already happening. The more we venture into using tabletop RPGs as a medium for expectators' entertainment, we and we associate artistic performance done by professionals in a professional fashion to how well someone should do at a table, the more this is going to become alienating to people that look, think, and behave differently than the image projected. And let me tell you, Los Angeles is very different from everywhere else. Have a nice day. This is uh, Leo's tongue coming at you from the future to let you know the voiceover work done on those cards. Uh, from Dr. Joanna and Dr. Richards are not obviously done by the same people there. They are done by, uh, Dr. Joanna is done by uh, Gabrielli. She is an amazingly talented writer and uh, you can find her at Porta de Castelo and uh, her links are also in the description down below. And Dr. Richard was actually voiced by Rafael Cruz, which is another amazingly talented person that plays a lot here at the channel too. You can find his links in the description below. Thank you, and bye-bye.